The lawyers have submitted their papers. The courts are ready. On Wednesday, August the 22nd, the case in which Nelson Chamisa is challenging Emerson Mnangagwa's election will be heard in the Supreme Court. We can sit here and speculate about what's going to happen. Everyone's been having a lot of fun doing so. But as hard as it is, we just have to wait it out and let the court do its job. It'll be all over soon anyway. Well, at least we hope so. But you know who is not sitting around and waiting for the court? The president-elect himself. In the last few days, he was at the Sadiq Summit in Vinduk, Namibia. And that's where we want to start today's show. This is a new POV segment, POV Beyond, where we look at what's going on across the region. Now, there are a lot of changes happening all around us in Sadiq. It's not just Zimbabwe that's going through some of these changes. This week, we want to have a look at what our neighbors are doing to manage all of this change. ED was one of five presidents making their maiden speeches at the Sadiq Summit. The others were Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa, Mukwetsi Masisi of Botswana, João Lorenzo of Angola, and Azali Osomani of the Cormos also made their debuts at the summit. Not only that, Joseph Kabila of the DRC made his last speech. He won't be standing in the next election in the DRC. By the end of the year, the Congo will have a new president. So you see, there's a lot going on. But looking at everything that's going down across the region, it's clear that this succession issue is a problem all over Africa. The story is the same. One guy runs things for a while, people get tired of him. A new guy comes in. And when that new guy comes in, they start changing everything that the old guy used to do. They even go after the old guy. So you've got to admire how all of these new presidents are not wasting time in stamping their authority. So where do we begin? Let's start in Angola. In 1998, Eduardo de Santos told his party, Hey, I'm done. I'm leaving office. Pick my successor. One of the guys raised their hand. That was João Lorenzo. And at the time, he was Secretary General of the ruling party, the MPLA. Ex-Army General. Well, what happened next? De Santos changed his mind. He said, I'm not going anywhere. He demoted Lorenzo instead. And now that's what you get for showing a little bit of ambition. But Lorenzo worked his way back and now he's the man in charge. Sound a bit familiar? And Lorenzo is showing that he is in charge. First, he got rid of the intelligence head because he was loyal to Dos Santos. Again, we've seen this before, haven't we? He didn't just stop there. Many thought Dos Santos would be pulling the strings from the background. But Lorenzo is his own man. He's going after the Dos Santos family. The son of Dos Santos was in charge of the government's 5 billion sovereign wealth fund. Lorenzo fired him. Now the De Santos boy has been arrested for allegedly stealing some of that loot. De Santos' daughter was in charge of the state oil company. Lorenzo has fired her too. He's also cancelled a lot of the contracts that she had with the government. Two other De Santos kids had TV contracts. Lorenzo has cancelled those too. Now it makes you wonder, if ED survives his court case, will he go after the Mugabe's as well? Well, we hear stuff of Simba Chikore still being involved in that whole Zim Airway structure. We wait and see. But that's what Lorenzo is doing, going after his old master. De Santos must be wondering why he left Lorenzo succeed him. You know the other guy wondering the same? Ian Kama over in Botswana. He picked Masisi to be his successor. Masisi was as loyal as a deputy could be. Kama probably figured, yeah, here's a guy I can trust. He'll be my buddy for life. Well, Masisi switched on Kama real quick. Masisi is getting rid of all of Kama's friends in government. He's fired the head of intelligence, a friend of Kama. Many of Kama's friends have lost their jobs under Masisi. Again, familiar, isn't it? Masisi has even banned Kama from one of his favorite hobbies, flying military aircraft. Those aren't your toys, he's been told. Masisi has even been brave enough to tell De Beers that if they want to keep mining in Botswana, they must make sure that the diamonds are cut and polished at home in the country. He's gone and changed some of Kama's laws. Kama was so powerful, he had laws telling people at what time they were allowed to buy beer. He even had a levy on beer because he figured people drank too much. Masisi is getting rid of all of that. Kama has even complained that state-owned media are no longer giving him any coverage. He's not ruled out working with the opposition against his own party. Look, here's a guy who didn't like the private media very much. In his 10 years, not once did he have a press conference. He arrested journalists and some had to leave the country. Now he's been having interviews with the same private press, complaining about how Masisi is treating him. A powerful president leaves power, loses his privilege, his friends are fired from intelligence and from the government, he complains about state media. Where have we all heard this before? 
And now, where do we go next? To the DRC. Kabila says he's stepping down, but is he really leaving power? He's picked a successor, a loyal minister called Emmanuel Shadari. Shadari will be one of at least 26 candidates in the December election in the Congo. Kabila is trying very hard to get his guide to win. Opposition leader Moise Katumbi has been banned from entering the country. A warrant of arrest has been issued against him. Now here's a funny twist. Katumbi's brother, Abriam, is wanted in the DRC, but he's in Zambia where he's been given asylum. The Zambians won't hand him over. Tanai BT must be wondering why he didn't get the same deal. Then there's another Kabila opponent, Jean-Pierre Bemba. He only came back home this month after spending the last decade in custody in The Hague. He too could still be barred from running. To Malawi now, another case of a VP stabbing his old boss in the back. 45-year-old VP Salos Chilima has decided to run against President Peter Mtariga. He's saying it's time for young people to take over. Chilima has formed his own party. Chilima is promising to create a million jobs in a year. He says Mtarika has imported a special machine to rig next year's elections. And get this, he's also promising to build a high-speed railway between Ilongwe and Blantyre, the two major cities in the country. Of course, Mtarika is telling people that Chilima is just selling dreams. Again, does all this sound familiar? And closing, to South Africa. Zuma is having trouble in the courts. Some of his supporters aren't too happy with this. They say he's being persecuted and elections are only next year. That's yet another country to watch. So this is our neighborhood. This is change within our region. Sometimes we aren't too sure about this kind of change we're getting. Sometimes we get the change that is not the kind of change we're expecting. Maybe not the change you wanted. But change is still good. The region is challenging and renewing itself, more over than before. Think about it. There are no big men left in Sadiq now. Mugabe and Dos Santos were the last left of that era. We can now look at a new Sadiq where our leaders are all on equal footing. And it's because of all of this we're seeing these changes. We are different countries, yes. But looking at what's happening, maybe things aren't so different at all. So more power to you, the people of Sadiq.